Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and as of this recording, 2023.1 has just released, and I want to spend just a couple of minutes going through some of the top features that I think you should know a little more about. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at, not it's not going to be a comprehensive, I'm not going to go through every single line of the release notes or anything like that, but let's hop in and look at just the top three or four things that I think are going to be changes or make changes to my modeling workflows and I think you guys should look at uh, and maybe consider them for yours. Let's look. Okay, so first thing, I mean, this is not really, I mean, it's a change. I don't know it's gonna affect anything, but you notice the new icons. Uh, this is kind of nice. These icons, these blue and red icons are the same as the icons in the other versions of software. So if you spend time changing from the, the web modeler to iPad to desktop, uh, it's the same icons throughout. So especially new users who are, are using multiple platforms, uh, this is going to be a real easy way to pick it up because it's the same same images here that I see on the other versions of SketchUp. So that's really nice. Uh, it is the same icons too, whether you have, I just brought up this, you guys know I don't usually use, use this large toolbar over here. I try to use shortcuts, which I recommend, but uh, I wanted to show a lot more buttons here and uh, same icons up here. So check that out. All right, so as far as uh, functional changes, one of the big ones is snaps. So the way snaps works is as soon as you create geometry, put it into a group, you have the ability to double click to enter the group, right click, and you can say, make and edit snaps. And I'm not gonna go into all of the, the whole process of uh, you know creating and editing snaps. We'll have some other videos that'll go real deep into using that. But the basic functionality is that if I select this skylight I created right here, uh, and I want to move it, so I'm going to go to move. Uh, when I hover over, I'll get this new snap, this new point that I've I created. And when I drag that and move it around, I can put that anywhere. And you can see because of the way the snap was created, it automatically snapped to the roof right there. So let's grab that, and I'm going to make a copy of it. And see, I'll come up this roof here, and I'll switch to this slope right here. See how it moved there, and it cop and it uh, changed the slope. Same thing. I'll make another copy, bring it over here, and it switches again. Snaps are really cool because that can all be defined inside the, the actual component. So I know a lot of times we have, you know, we have components that can snap to a plane and they'll automatically bring a window in and they'll snap here. Problem is if I grab it or copy it and bring it over to this wall, it's still going to be the same orientation as it was originally placed. So the idea of snaps is taking that idea of orientation and just going further, automatically changing how something gets placed in. So this is great for things that are repeatedly put in, um, for assemblies where I have multiple pieces that need to connect together. Think things like pipes, HVAC. Awesome way to do that, because uh, I don't have to go in there and rotate and move stuff every time I put multiple pieces together. I can set up snaps, so that ha happens automatically. All right, some of you know that uh, one of my favorite commands of the last release was flip. Flip is a great tool to take geometry and flip it. I mean, that's the name. It's, it's really well named. Uh, when you click on flip and you have something highlighted, you will get the red, green, blue planes, and you can click on those or drag them. That, that's that's the, the way it worked before. Uh, something new is the ability to move over another plane and get this purple plane. So any, any plane in the model, I can move over and have the possibility of mirroring or copying along that plane. So if I come in here, I have this 45 degree uh, face right here on this arm. So if I was to take this and copy this chair on that 45, look what happens. I get a new chair, which I'll just move over a little bit, at 90 degrees, because I copied it at the 45 degree cut right there. So any plane now becomes a potential plane for mirroring. I can mirror on any plane at all. I do need a plane. I need a surface to hover over, but uh, makes it super easy, quick to to copy geometry that way uh, along a you know a plane that I define rather than having to align to my axes. So cool new feature, great way to to do that kind of stuff. Um, something else that's kind of fun in here is my horizons have changed a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my sky on real quick, and we get that blue gradient down to white that everybody in SketchUp's used to. Here, let's turn the ground on too so I can see that. Uh, what I have the ability to do now is actually edit this horizon color. 
you can see right here I do have a sky blue and then I have this the default color as my what what that blue is fading into uh, if I pick that and let's uh, we'll go with something s simple like my my colored pencils here on my Mac color picker I can actually pick a different color for that blue to fade into so I can create a ooh, that sounds it looks a little, little spooky there we go it's a little less spooky <laughs> I can create this gradient to you know here at sunrise sundown um, I could make a match I could actually choose the same blue or a similar blue it's the exact same blue uh, so it looks like it's the same color the whole way and it doesn't fade at all or I can just go you know totally crazy and weird and I don't know you pretty much do whatever you want any two colors is basically is what I'm gonna do is the gradient right here from the sky down to the horizon so it's a cool way to just come up with a different look and feel super I mean it's a quick way to add you know now I look at this and I'm like well that's probably dusk because the sky is changing color cool way to add a little little something extra to your model with just a couple clicks there uh, changing that horizon color uh, one other tool I want to look at is the lasso select tool so I have some some pavers just kind of sitting in a group here I'm gonna double click to enter that and uh, this lasso select it's a great tool it's, it was actually developed for SketchUp for iPad and it does make it real easy to go in here and you know squiggle around and grab a specific group of rocks that I want here or a group of entities whatever they be it doesn't have to be used on rocks I just <laughs> use that uh, it's nice but um, using this is definitely something that came from you know having the pencil available uh, on the iPad when it comes to using the mouse, not always the most precise movement, you know, your finger gets stuck or you're moved to the edge of your mouse pad, whatever. Uh, and it can be a little bit tricky to get that nice smooth selection. So what the lasso select has been modified to do is if I click and drag, I'm gonna drag a lasso like this. So that's, that's something that's, it works the same as it did before. But if I click and release, what I can do is create a polygonal lasso select so this works so much better with a, a mouse than it does with uh, like I said uh, an Apple pencil or something like that because what that's gonna let me do when I double click it's going to close my selection left to right right to left still works the same with the dashed versus uh, the solid lines which means anything that the dashed select like this crosses is going to be highlighted versus going the other direction gives me the solid one only the things that are fully inside the selection at the end are going to be highlighted so really cool for mouse if you want to use that uh, as opposed to doing you know the standard select 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 uh, but it is a nice option to have that polygon it's also nice in my opinion we're, we're wandering into Aaron's opinion only this is not necessarily opinion this is endorsed by anybody other than me but I like that it's all one tool. So with the lasso select tool, I can click to select, I can click and drag to do a lasso, or I can click and move to do a polygonal lasso. I don't have separate commands like, you know, Photoshop and other things like that. I have to have the multiple different select tools. Uh, I can do it all with one, which I think is really nice. So that's just uh, like my top four things that I saw in the, the uh, the point release, the 2023.1 version of SketchUp for Desktop, that I was like, oh, we should, we should just throw that into a quick video. There's more to that. There, there's more stuff in there. If you do have it, check out the release notes. There's been some changes, some fixes, uh, that kind of thing. Some other tools that I didn't necessarily get too deep into, but check it out. Uh, new version's available now. Try it out, and uh, let us know what you know, think of it in the comments. Thank you.